Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. This is Gail of Gaia and this is Free Range. And we have a real special treat for you today. This isn't going to be um, our typical show. Drake is going to lead us in a meditation and we want you to shine your light and he's going to give you instructions all the way. So let me bring him on. And also we have Dot Connector here. The three of us are all participating. So um, get ready for this one. Hello, everyone. And welcome everyone love you so happy you're here let's make this a wonderful show let's shine some light and raise the vibration or the frequency of the planet let's do this <laughs> there i be there you be <laughs> and there, there be that connector yes uh, this this type of thing has been done by a lot of people a lot of different ways i'm going to suggest that we just simply turn up our light now, that's a bit different than some of the ways we've done things of this nature before. There's been prayer rooms and whatever. It's very simple. And this is going to be uh, fun. <coughs> Please, uh, be careful with that. Cigarette butt. Nah. Anyway. Um, Mute it. <laughs> Mute it. I never know when it's coming someday. Anyway. Okay. Um, the best thing that you can think of doing is uh, closing your eyes. Ooh. <laughs> um, hopefully you can trust the person sitting next to you not to go touching things they shouldn't be touching when your eyes is closed. Now, I go, well, Gail said she wanted a fun show. I'm going to make it fun. <laughs> um, you take the, uh, the very best of your imagination. And you remember... Even if you're an old fart like me, you remember an imagination where that uh, box from the uh, brand new washer or dryer or refrigerator became a spaceship among other, or whatever. Um, <laughs> you can, at the same time, imagine yourself in the swing that that little girl was swinging in. Yeah. You can also imagine yourself being... Um, totally free from the horse manure that's going on on this planet. One of the ways to do that is to simply black out and blot out everything. And with your eyes closed, you will see a small light. And it may be in the background, might be across the room, you know, you don't know where it's going to be. Anywho, uh, grab it by its dimmer switch. Ooh, yeah. Now, what's funny about the uh, dimmer switch is this. The dial type where you turn the dial and it gets brighter or dimmer or whatever you do. Okay, you push that thing, it turns things on and off. I suggest that with your eyes closed, you push your dimmer switch. Clunk. Then you hit it again. Clunk. Then you see a very small glow at a great distance in the background. You will see that which is not there, but is anyway. Mm. <laughs> oh, this gets to be funners, I'll tell you. Uh, you're, imagine you're imagining something that doesn't exist, but it's there anyway, and affects reality in ways most people can't comprehend, let alone understand, get to just, uh, and, you know, uh, most people aren't uh, these great scientists of the mind. So here's how this works. In uh, reality, you have two things. One is thought, which is you, and the projection of that thought. 
the projection of the thought that you're going to do on this meditation uh, deal tonight is very simple. You <laughs> are going to become the light that was biblically spoken of in the parable of the bushel, where they took a candle, put it under the bushel, and then were told to remove the bushel. When they removed it, the question wasn't about, oh, that's a lot better or any of that. Look at how much darkness fleeth the light. Such a small light, yet it lights up the whole room and everybody in it. That's basically the premise of turning up your light. That's the basic premise of learning how to control and turn it on. Now, here's the, here comes the fun. <laughs> I'm going to ask everybody to quit um, reading the chat. Close your eyes and you can't read the chat. And what you'll see is you'll see that small glow. Now, you've already turned the, the dimmer on and off and on again. And you turn the dimmer on when you recognize that there's a light back there. You turned it off clunk and then turn it on clunk and you will notice a difference and even though it is at a great distance there is a purity of that particular light even though it's small it can be huge depending on what you do with it now people that had fires built great with it tossed on more wood and the fire got bigger and bigger and bonfires and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, thing that you want to do is to turn that light, start turning it up. Now, funny thing about your dimmer switch, when you turn it, usually it comes to a point that stops. Guess what? This new dimmer switch you got don't have a stop. It just keeps getting bigger and better and brighter and more so. Now, the key to overall light, especially a planet or solar system, is for each of the people with a light to combine it. Ooh, this is fun. You connect it. It's like an extension cord into as many of the other lights as you can see. When you perceive these lights, you'll notice that as you connect them, the light gets brighter. Now the fun begins. You grab the uh, big Gahuna uh, dimmer switch and start to crank it. Yeah, I mean crank it and crank it. The light should be in your mind getting brighter and brighter to such an extent that it might even hurt your eyes to look at it. It's so bright because it's pure light. Pure light is very difficult. The sun isn't pure light, although it's difficult to look at. And yet, here we go. You will feel the full force of creation welling up in the ocean to create a wave for you to surf on. Ooh, it is now time for you to be ahead of the curve, to create a light that's so bright it cannot be ignored. You, uh, certain of you, and this is this something that's happened to me, can actually glow in the dark. That's how bright, that's how intense, and that's how pure and how complete this simple white light is and as it grows you find uh, an individual uh, to connect it to and I'll give somebody a, a little uh, shot of mine right now I'm gonna close my eyes and do a number on one of the two ladies in this room <laughs> all right now did anybody get a message in terms of all of a sudden the light got a lot brighter. All I did was add my little bit to it. When you take several candles 
a little bitty flame, an inch tall maybe. It lights up a whole room. Think about all that light. Scaring off the darkness. Now, if you want to really uh, cause things to take off, you simply give the experience of growth. In other words, you're cranking that, you're cranking that, that switch. It's getting brighter. <clears throat> and you actually connect with another individual. The connection, you may not tell that it's there. You might just perceive the light growing. And yet, bigger, brighter, more intense, and more pure. And it will actually go to the extent of uh, shining out from you as an individual. And that is the part that we want to cover most. Each individual needs to concentrate on their light getting so bright that they can't contain it within themselves, so they share it with everything. Anything, doesn't matter what it is, that has been adverse, needs a dose of this light. Give it a shot. Then take that that you get in a response uh, <laughs> where darkness, evility, or whatever you want to call it, begins to lighten up. Ooh, lighten up. Hey, we're getting light everywhere. Just That's so cool. Think about uh, being able to look <coughs> under uh, the veil. There is a veil covers everybody's mind. Supposedly it keeps you from knowing these things or turning up your light or doing the things that we're doing. And yet this veil slowly has a tendency to dissolve. And it dissolves much like, uh, <laughs> remember the movie The Matrix? Ooh, there's a lot of dissolvement in that. There's also a lot of purpose and a lot of principle. The best and most uh, principle-laden movie I've ever seen is The Chocolate Factory. It contains principle. Now, that's that's true word. Um, when you take the bushel off of the off of the candle, and you can see this old wood table, and the bushel, and the, and two people grab each handle of the bushel, and they take it off, take the bushel, set it on the ground, and <clears throat> my goodness, the whole room is lit up. All of the people in there are lit up. Then these people need to take in, like I'm going to ask you to do, a light that's greater than themselves. That's the one that has been fostered, created, or <coughs> made into being, brought into manifestation by our Creator. And this is the light that you now are going to expand. And not just the dark spot in a room, but the whole house. Ooh, the yard, trees, animals and critters out in the yard will come to the light because they know what it is. It's an instinct with the, with the, with the animals. With us, we are supposed to be knowing, yet we know so little and practice even less. This is your opportunity to put into place the very force of creation. That's something that nothing can uh, deny denounce or to control not completely not fully and yet what do i see i have seen great suffering great magic being used uh against people causing them to suffer this is something that should not be how do we rectify that 
Well, how about we just uh, light it up? How about we just pour light on it until it can't stand it no more? It'll either go poof and cease to exist, or it'll join with us, producing its own light of creation. Creation is very simple. A thing either is or is not. One either does a thing or does not. Yoda in Star Wars covered that pretty thoroughly. And yet people <laughs> look at these things with disdain. Oh, that can't be. You can't get this by imagining a picture. You can't cause things to happen by thinking about it. Oh, my goodness. Want to bet? What do you think a prayer is? Yeah, you put your words together and said, this is how I need things to be. This is how things should be. Little children should not suffer at the hands of uh, predators and nasties. Uh, neither should adults. And yet, they do. Why? Because they haven't had uh, a big bucket full of light dumped on them. That's why. <laughs> If these people would take their light and shine it into the into those little corners where the cobwebs hide, you'd find that all that stuff tends to go away. Cobwebs, and the re there's a reason I brought that up. Uh, <coughs> cobwebs, when you uh, pour the light on them, disappear. Oh my goodness, I wonder what those were. Was that some of the jumble of the nonsense in your mind? Something that goes ring around the rosy and rings a birthday bell and keeps you awake at night for no good reason? Now you can begin to get the gist of using the light to heal yourself. If you can apply the light to yourself or a friend or someone who needs the help and cause them to be better, then you can also take those uh increases in the light and apply it to everything. Gail, you wanted to say something? Okay. <coughs> no, I'm fine. What? I said no, I'm fine. Okay. I was I was using the light. How about you, Dot? I'm sure the dot connector is around somewhere. She's probably looking at another chat or something. I'm very <laughs> relaxed right now. Yeah. Did you hear me? Oh boy. Okay. Gun turning clone hillbilly. Yeah, I, I told I told Christine to wrench that one. I don't know if you saw it, Chest. <laughs> Kent Dunn needs to walk around in the pasture a little bit. Maybe he'll step in something that'll wake him up. <laughs> yes. Hey. We don't and uh, we don't what? I'm wishing I, only good things on people. There, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't want to spoil it. Come uh, on. Yeah. Somebody had to that. That's why I said wrench that one. Um, it's just being. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Is. That's the order of Black Sun. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, well, the Black Sun was done. Now, I mean that quite literally. About a month ago, in terms of being able to do anything. Why? Myself, E.T., and a few other people have gotten together and decided that these nefarious, nasty organizations and groups should <laughs> have to pay the price. You see, whenever you do something in magic, there is a price required of you. And in the case of doing something bad or nasty it's a tr it's a treble price you pay three times what normally would would happen and the happening is simple you can either get yourself straight figure it out come together or cease to exist that's the choice they've got <laughs> ah No, Pudwhacker, if sharing light uh, to heal, does it violate free will? No, the light is universal. 
the sun shines on everybody. It, uh, God maketh it to rain on the good and the evil both. Therefore, it is neither good nor evil to exercise it. So free will? Absolutely not. That's when, that is the main uh, gift from our creator or God, whoever, however you want to look at that, that he gave to us. Believe or not, as you so choose. And that's in the book. <laughs> Principle. Look it up. If you want to believe in uh, <clears throat> airy fairies or uh, dragons or whatever, no problem. If you believe in God, you get all the benefits. Now, the reason people don't get the benefits they'd like to get is simple. Now, God says he's pouring out a blessing. A big funky one. And yet, uh, <coughs> people don't understand that. If somebody's going to pour something out, that uh, generally means that you're supposed to figure out some kind of a way to catch it if it's a good thing. Be under it at the very least so it can wash all over you. Or maybe, just maybe, you go down to the hardware store, get a bucket, and run, and run off in the woods. Now, people think you're crazy, and that's fine. <laughs> God says he has procured unto himself a peculiar people. Well, go ahead and be peculiar. You can run around in the woods with a bucket if you wish. However, uh, when you start getting these blessings, worlds, and I mean whole worlds, whole um existences will open up. It's like what the Moody Blues say in one of their songs. Oh, good to see you, my dear friend. Tell us what you've seen in far away and forgotten lands where empires have turned back to sand. Ooh, pretty simple. That tells you that there's not very much that we have available to us that's going to last any length of time. Except <laughs> your spirit, that's immortal. Hmm. Maybe you ought to connect to it more often. Maybe I'll get rid of this white hair <laughs> and, you know, bulk up a little bit and be more of a man or something. Hey, I don't know. There, there's so many silly ways that you can get a blessing and so many silly blessings. And God knows what you want before you ask. So you just uh, make it extra real by saying, Oh, God, please, can you just do this for me? I need to, you know, <clears throat> or whatever. And that's where you turn up the light. And turning up the light involves two things. <clears throat> turning off the world. That's where you close your eyes. And you can't see the screen. You can't see the lights, etc. And yet you can see a light back in the back of your head. And... If you go go uh, bringing that light forward or towards you, or you move towards it, and it, it tends to get uh, more of a pure white, and it has a tendency to get brighter. And remember the knob. You can crank that sucker forever, and it just gets brighter and brighter until such time as your eyeballs pop, and then, you know, you might be in trouble on that one. But <laughs> okay. you can get to it. You can get to, fantastic and far off places where empires are turned back to sand. Well, you know, I usually, when I, when I'm doing the light exercise like this, I, I frequently imagine the light going up, um, up to the cosmos and down to the core of, of mother earth. And, yep. um, and then sometimes too, in meditations, another thing that I've done just to try to, um, is actually imagine myself flying, around over the planet and um, spreading either the violet flame or the white light, um, actually mm. seeing it in my, in my head and, and, and trying to share it with everybody on the planet. I didn't know you could fly, but that's, that's cool. That's in my dreams. Okay. Oh. <laughs> in my meditation, I can fly well, there. I haven't, well, I haven't mastered it yet in the physical. <laughs> <coughs> Being uh, able to do some things that other people can't, you all you have to do is to take the uh, dream world, ah, we're going to touch on it, and make it into the reality that you wish to see. 
get that picture clearly of everybody on the planet getting along. That's all. They don't have to be. Uh, they don't have to be some kind of special deal, whiz banger, or some kind of special deal. Uh, well, it don't. And all you got to do, all you have to do, is understand the basic premise that we, being the crown of creation, have special capabilities and powers that ET would dearly love to have that they don't. Oh. Yeah, in that respect, you or and we and everybody around, we're superior to ET in that respect only. And I'm just saying in that respect, um, no individual, and I mean this quite, it says it in the book several different ways, but no individual is superior over another. No individual has the right to tell a person how to live their life. They choose that. You have a conscience when you're growing up. Learn to listen to it. Oh, guess what? Even old funky monkeys like me got the conscience going on in there saying, don't say that one. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I don't I don't want the ladies on the program to come after me. I, I've got enough problems with my good health. I want to keep it in one place. And I don't need them chopping it up and spreading it around for fish food or something. Therefore, you will be told. And the first thought is God thought. Bear that in mind. You'll be told what to say, how to say, when to say, and what to do at the proper occasion. And what that does, you may only reach one person out of thousands. And that one person is the seed that's planted that will grow up. Now think about this. Into a sunflower and shine its light everywhere. Who sunflowers need any flower that follows the sun across its arc across the sky is a pretty cool plant. It doesn't matter what whether it's a sunflower or what. Um, we feed birds, we feed critters, we take care of critters. We try to let nature take its course here. I live in the mountains, I mean in deep woods. And we can be more than what we think. Why? Our thoughts are limited. How are they limited? You've been taught all kinds of stuff ever since you was a little kid. How much is true? How much really works? Uh, you hit your thumb with a hammer and you got two ways to go. You can call it everything but uh, <laughs> living tissue, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> all kind of nasty whatevers, or you can go, ooh, God bless it. Oh, sure was it in ha. And all of a sudden, the pain begins to lessen greatly. Ooh. Well, I thought I hit it with it. And it quits bleeding. And you go, well, I don't know what's going on. I'm sure glad God blessed it. That thumb sure feels a lot better. Uh -huh. Never swung a hammer in your life. I don't believe it. You was a little kid, you got into daddy's tools and got one of his hammers out and was beating on the floor with it. Guaranteed. Every kid does that. Girls or boys doesn't make any make any differences to gender. What makes a difference is this. The capability of the individual to follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. <coughs> As Moody Blue says, love everybody and make them your friend. It don't matter who they are. It don't matter what religion they got. You know, I like this one. Uh, let your light shine so brightly that others can see their way out of the dark. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, glow in the dark. Well, if you glow in the dark bright enough, you can walk down a, down a, a, a path in the, in the dark mountains. And light it up so so thoroughly that people will say, "Well, <coughs> mm, I got a, I got a choice here. I'm gonna have to have to keep an eye on this guy." And and his buddy said, taps him on the show. What do you mean? Well, <laughs> I can see him and I can see the path, and I ain't worried about much nothing else. Everything seems to be right. Simple. Uh, right. <laughs> oh boy, right hand, left hand. Uh, 
<laughs> oh boy. Birds would be in trouble if they followed politics because a bird with one wing don't get very far. You gotta have a left and a right and a and flappity flappity on both sides or it don't get off the ground. It's real it's real simple. <laughs> and you don't want to bust your whatever's on the on the cold concrete of that sidewalk. I guarantee you I did that. I didn't know I was gonna do it. I did it and oh boy did that smart. And I thought, well that was stupid. And I heard this still small voice say, You're absolutely right. And I thought, who's that? Look around, there ain't nobody there. I'm uh -huh. Oh yeah, I hear voices in my head. But what kind of a voice do you hear? And whose voice is it? Uh oh, here we go. It's not a question, it's just a good statement, I thought. Clunk. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, you understand what you hear. It says working <laughs> your light is as easy as understanding that. Where your thoughts go, your energy flows and think to balance, think in balance of the three brains, the head, the heart, and the intuitive brain known as the gut. Uh-huh. And learn to balance your chakras. Those are the energy uh, interfaces between you and the cosmos. You and uh, God uh, comes about after you access your higher self. But it's not it's not uh, absolute that you should, you got to do any particular thing. Not absolute. A guy was going to put some he healing oil on somebody once. And, you know, he come up with this grease box filler that he had, but it was special oil that was that his mom had kept. And he took the oil out and used it. Uh, the person he, he used it on. What is that? I I didn't know that they had oil like that. He said, I'm not sure. It belonged to my mother. And she prized it highly. And it's the best we got. And so I'm doing the best I can. Ooh. And God said, hmm, here's one of my sons in whom I'm well pleased. Bingo. All kind of blessings and all this other stuff. If you wish to prosper, if you wish to understand how this is going to work uh, long term, close your eyes. Turn that light up. Keep turning it up until it hurts. And then turn it up again. Just keep going at it. The more we do this, and it don't have to be at night. It can be during the day, on your break, whatever. The more you keep doing that, the more people are magnetically drawn to you yes. and they don't know why and you may not know why either but it's cool and then they'll ask you what you're doing and you say well i was imagining this and doing that and uh you and then you come over and ask me what i was doing and the person looks at you and says how did you know what i was asking i'd never said a word to you huh well then i guess there's uh, some kind of uh different sorts of things going on here uh are you sure you didn't say anything? No, nah, I didn't say a word. Well, my goodness. Maybe we should uh, uh, get together a little more often, like for lunch, and talk about some of these things because I'm really interested and I'd like to learn. Mm -hmm. And then you shut up and let that other person run, run, run. they tell you everything you've been wondering, wanting to know about how they feel about this, that, and the other thing. The interesting part. How do you correlate that? How do you put that together with the light? How do you cause the two to come together so that the light becomes a part of the other person? Ooh. You want to have fun? Ha, fun's real simple. I had that. I did that uh, on the swings and slide at school. <laughs> I could... Uh, Climb up a tree quicker than just about anybody, but except for this one girl. She could keep up with me. She was a tomboy and a half, and ooh, I have the highest respect for her to this day about that, about all of it. Um, the most wonderful people that you uh, <laughs> are going to come across are going to be the ones on the ground going, hey, man, did you see that? And they said, see what? Well, here, let me show you. 
and they point up to the sky and there's a sign in the clouds in the sky. God's winking or going, nah. hey, okay. Uh, <laughs> get over yourself. The least shall be the greatest and the greatest shall be the least. Ooh, how's that work? Does that mean you take Elon Musk's money away from him and uh, have him flipping burgers somewhere or what? I mean, you know. Um, that would be a good experience for a lot of people <laughs> in Congress. <laughs> well, my my take on the experience end of it is very simple. They should be forced, to all of them, to run through a, a, a cow pasture. And hopefully when they step in something, it'll wake them up to a reality that they hadn't considered before. Ew. <laughs> <coughs> It might be a blessing. You don't know. Man, the flies are going to be following me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my wife told me just, and kids wanted to complain about my my feet stinking because he's in boots all day. And and then I come come home and woo, they got a whiff of that and put me out with a cat. <laughs> Shut me out the door. <laughs> I have I have a son who has the worst smelling feet. I swear, all the, all the, all the whatever he's processing in his body, it all goes to his feet. I don't know. It's funny. I'll tell you the secret. Same way. Everybody, everybody and their mother-in-law a secret. Uh, you got stinky feet. There's uh, several causes for that, but one of the things that can take care of a lot of the problems with your feet is uh, plain old apple cider vinegar. Cider vinegar, yeah. You just take that and rub it on there. Oh. Oops, well, that's the wrong one. Well, it's funny. I, I, when I, um, I didn't, that's not the one that I meant to, to put up. So I have to go well, back. That'll work. Okay. That'll work. You know what he did? You know what he told a certain company to do with themselves, didn't you? Leave yeah, that was important. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah told Here's them to the start. one. That's the question I wanted to ask. Drake, I read that Mother Earth transitioned to 4D on 9 5. Is this true? No. <laughs> oh, you spoil sport. <laughs> till 10-3. Uh, you got 20-some days, I believe. Uh, let's see, 10. I just, we can actually give, how come we can give dates this time? I mean, I, I thought dates well, were I've been giving that date out for a while now, um, you know. I know. Yeah. But that's the date I would look at. And uh, 4D on 9-5, no, let's see, 9-5. That was Monday. That was a holiday. So we would go the same time as um, Mother Earth, correct? Yeah. We'd all go together. Well, everything, this is what I was trying to get across to everybody, all of it, the solar system and everything on the solar systems, planets and moons and all that, all transitions. Well, what happens when they transition? Well, that's up to the individual that's in charge of it. You have to talk to them and they ain't. They are not going to talk to anybody until it's time, and it ain't time. So therefore, they're going. They're sitting up there, <laughs> kind of frowning at me for doing that to them. Hey, come on! I got to have fun with somebody, and you showed up. I'm, you know, <clears throat> what do you expect from a jokester? Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, here's another one that came. Out. I had a vision recently of a orangish and red dragon watching the sun's activity. Was that you, Drake? No, I'm the white dragon. I thought you were a red dragon. How come you called red? <laughs> the red dragon. The red dragon is is the evil I get to battle. There is going to be a battle in the sky between me, my white dragon, me, and the red dragon. This can be confirmed if you look into Chinese. Uh, Antiquity, and uh, you can find it there. It's also uh, written by uh, the people that built the temples before the Aztecs got there. Uh, they wrote that into it. Uh, <laughs> the winged, ser winged serpent. Oh, my. What's it sound like? It sounds like a dragon. Well, you know, them big old things out there flopping around. Uh, <coughs> yes, please hit that like button out there because that does help the video get... Um, it helps with the algorithms that they use for videos. So I appreciate it. <laughs> the algorithm rhythms. Like now, I can't say it. Um, yeah, for, yeah, when you hit, yeah, exactly. When you hit the the like button, kind of thing. So anyway, yeah. um, uh, we're 
Tim O, I think, let me see if I can find it again. He wanted to ask a question that he said he's been waiting to ask for uh, four years. And I said, I've only one, here it is. I've only one question to for Drake for the last four years. Should I ask it now or wait? Sock it to me. <laughs> I knew he'd say that. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tim O, give us your question. Oh, wait a minute. Here's here's somebody saying, okay, we'll be we'll be waiting for your Tim O. Write up your question. So here's another one. Um, oh, that's not it either. It always moves when I click on it. So similar story of the Hopi about the battle yeah. to come between the dragon. It's not a phoenix. It's not a phoenix. Uh, the white dragon is the phoenix. Bear that in mind. Look it up. <laughs> I ain't going to do everybody's own work for them. I took about uh, two and a half years, approximately 12, 14 hours a day, and researched all this stuff. Man, oh man, this, you talk about convoluted, screwed up, squirreled together. Woo. Wow. Chiron has already said recently that we are in the fourth. Nope. You're going to have a flash of light. Remember the big solar flare deal? It ain't going to be so intense that it hurts anything or anybody. It might hurt your eyes if you stare at it, but you're going to have a flash. Just like a big flash bulb going off. That's the uh, last of the vestige of the of 3D going out. Somebody unplugged the poor thing and it's dying. And uh, so you know, you get to you get to the, to a certain point. <coughs> well, some return on ones. <laughs> read that. Are you gonna read that one? Oh, uh, that says well, someone. Re Will some return home once the transition occurs? Uh, only after we're fully uh, complete with the transition. That means everybody's on board, they understand, and etc. It'll be some time after we trans transit um, into 4D, whatever it takes in uh, in terms of that is what it'll do. Okay, uh, Muggsy said Valiant Thor and Q, George... <laughs> Pulled us through a portal. Uh -huh. you, know anything, you know anything about that? Yeah. And what, uh, what's that all about? Well, <laughs> um, a portal doesn't go interdimensional; it stays in the same dimension. Bear that in mind. A true uh, true portal is one that takes you from one place to, to another. You remember Stargate? They went from one place to another. That's all. Yeah. <coughs> Is that the difference between a stargate and a portal? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, well, no, no, not exactly. Um, okay. A what, portal, what are you saying? A portal then? has been misconstrued because it has been mistranslated. The word portal means, um, uh, let's see, vortexical destination. Try that. <laughs> you have to look up the physics. And what that means is that you find the beginning of it here and the ending of it there, and you come over here. Now, the problem is you got to figure out how to go from over here to back over here. Uh, remember, they had a problem in that movie Stargate about the address? Well, if you didn't got the address, you might be screwed. <laughs> you may be stuck wherever you went, unable yeah. to get back. Yeah. No, one guy stayed anyway because he fell in love, but that's neither here. That's something different. Who was the one that would pull me Oh, out? here, here, here it is. I found it. I found it. Oh, found what? Well, I found Tim's. Let me get that one first. Drake, do you know who was the one that would pull me out the window five years ago? The yes. window was not open. Yes. Don't worry about it. That was uh, for to your benefit. They pulled you out that window and you don't remember anything past the window. And they did things for you uh, and returned you, uh, much as they used to do to me. Now, in my case, it was a straight up abduction. And um, <laughs> I learned how to break their, their uh, hypnotic hold. When I did that, they just went nuts. <laughs> I have never heard that much jabbering in so many different languages. As I did after I broke that. 
They dropped me about uh, three feet on the floor, flat on my back. Thump. Well, the noise was loud enough. <coughs> they all went jabbering and running for the door. Now try this. Right through my front door. They didn't open it. They just went through it. Nothing out there. And what's funny is that uh, mom and dad want to know what's going on. I said, I wasn't sure. But these little little suckers that were that are green, got big heads and all that, they had me up. They were holding me up. And they were taking me toward the door, and I didn't want to go. And Mom said I didn't have to, and so I exercised the power. I don't have to, and there it goes. $3,800 th stimulus check. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't heard that one. Oh. Um, well. Okay. That's probably <clears throat> not true, is it? You have to understand something. You're going to get promises, rumors, and this and that, like crazy, and it's going to get worse. And 3,800 stimulus check. Yeah, that's about oh, like the IRS saying, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. We owe you some money. Uh, you ain't going to hear that one either. <laughs> and if you do, you ain't going to see the money. They'll figure out a way to keep it. <laughs> yeah, so that we can't verify that in any way. I heard from a visitor that after the shift, the Earth's wobble will be corrected. What say you, Drake? Well, that is under consideration, and there's a reason for that. The wobble creates uh, winters and summers. It's like my head moving back and forth right now. Uh, if it's uh, wintertime, you get sun up here. It's not very strong. Summertime, it gets down here and cooks you. Um, the wobble creates a lot of uh, nice industry for people that uh, like to play in the snow. And there's nothing really wrong with it. It just and it happens. I mean, it's a part of the natural cycle of things. Okay. Oh, okay. Here's another question for you. Somebody said they had a beautiful purple rose rose hued energy come and surround me quite a few times. What might that be? Well, remember I told you about the armor that you put on, and it's sort of a, a translucent. Um, uh, pink color. <laughs> you, there are uh, entities, and this is a real mind blower. But there's entities that live in everything. We got there's some that live on the sun, some that live on Mars. Uh, variations, okay. Uh, and the uh, <laughs> reason that a uh, rose-hued energy would surround you would be for your protection. It's equivalent in many ways to the armor I told, talked about. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. That should cool. be, you should be happy to hear that one. Drake, is the IRS <laughs> going away? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a private uh, collection agency. It shouldn't be there in the first place. <laughs> I don't know what the many thousand people that they hired are going to do, but you know, Try to harass people that still believe that. Maybe they, they should flip birds. Go to work at, uh, you know, uh, White Castle or something. Really? Okay. Yeah. Here's, what's this one here? Will we be introduced to Mother God? <coughs> uh, God doesn't have a gender. But why? Well, everybody yeah. always calls him he. Huh? Everybody always refers to God as he. Yeah. Well, Mother God, he, God, whatever. God don't huh. have a gender. So, <laughs> well, they make it sound like he does because we call him he. So, we, um, we humans do that, yeah, because we were raised in a very patriarchal system, which was not the original. Well, the original was matriarchal, Lemuria, uh, Lemuria. women ran the world, and they did a lot better job of it than the men are doing today. Oh. I bet there wasn't anywhere as near as much war, if any. Uh, there's a lot of test testosterone that just shrank up too. I was, I could hear it wrinkling. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get you to smile if I kept picking on you. Uh, here we go. Let's see. I keep. Wait a minute. Uh, let me see. I want somebody says I want all my money back. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> 
How yeah. do you break the hypnotic hole? That was another question. Do How do you break the hypnotic hold that they have on okay. Okay. so many the people? Hypnotic, the hypnotic hold is similar to the Matrix. You remember the movies? They came out with the last one and fixed it supposedly, but that doesn't. That has nothing to do with our situation presently. We are uh, at the break point in terms of the Matrix. Uh, learning to obey what we decide should be. You remember Neil was running around like Superman, flying all over the place. Well, <coughs> do you really believe that um, we are powerless beings? I don't, because I've seen some of the miracles. Oh boy, she found another one. Yeah, well, I, no, it's very, you're, you, you may, we're making a very good point because we're mu much more powerful than we've ever been led to believe. And breaking through those programs is a real challenge. And that's where self inquiry and people need to really um, yeah. take a look at things in within themselves. Okay, yeah. is the Navy map of uh, worldwide flooding going to come to pass? No. Okay. That comes from the Greater Earth Changes website. If you go look at it, there's uh, uh, earth flooding, volcanoes, a uh, whole lot of uh, end times stuff. Well, the end times stuff, <clears throat> I'm being nice now. Uh, <coughs> although they thought it was uh, written in stone, has been mitigated to the point where it has no effect. And that means that those prophecies are no longer valid. Valid. So we're about to we're about to enter on enter into an age where we make our own um, prophecies and reality. And it's going to be yeah, oh, this is going to be the wildest roller coaster ride anybody's been on. <laughs> OK, here's one for you. Can you talk about negative attachments that attach when there is trauma? There are people who say they can remove these that cause a body problems. <clears throat> yeah, well, the negative attachment that you're talking about is uh, specifically, okay, and I mean specifically, um, that which you have here. It's not out there, it's here. The uh, One of the things in the Matrix uh, that they talked about was Neo jumps off a building. It's supposed to jump from building to building. He didn't quite make it. And uh, all of a sudden he says, ooh, look like this. And he's got blood in his hand. Uh, and he looks at, uh, looks around and says, I thought that, I thought this wasn't, I thought the Matrix wasn't real. And the answer was, your mind makes it real. If you want to know about your mind, uh, I'm going to blow it up right about now. Uh, there is a city in South America, an antique city, that has varying placement of pyramids and this and that, and it's a straight line. And if you take a look at it, you'll find that it just about perfectly matches a particle accelerator. If you lay down the human brain linearly, it almost exactly matches that. Think about it. Ooh. <coughs> okay, here we go. Another one. Is it true that each dimension has its own unique physics? Um, boy. <laughs> to some extent, <laughs> yes. To some extent, yes. And most of the extent, no. The physics you've never been taught is what the uh, fourth dimension will teach you about. Now, what may, what that means is that the third dimension is going to lose its hold on us physically. In other words, I go from this old man back to a teenager. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, uh, I'm wait. I can't wait. <laughs> see, she's going. She's going to be doing some stuff too. Watch. Look at that. Look at that grin on. She's guilty. You can tell by the grin. Anyway, the uh, the phys the true physics, uh, <clears throat> to a large part, are the exceptions that we have found in uh, electronics, nuclear, uh, time, uh, you name it. 
And you're going to find that ET has been using these physics for hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions. Okay, somebody says that Sam Mugsy actually said it was a wormhole we went through. Did we go through any wormhole recently that you're aware of? No, no, yeah. no. I don't know where, I don't know where she got that. If you went through a wormhole right now, the sun would be shut off. And believe me, you don't want to have that happen. Now, a wormhole, a wormhole and a portal are similar. Wormhole is, is a better designation of point A to point B. So, if, uh, <coughs> if you go through a portal, it's a, it would uh, appear as a lens. And the speed at which you would travel from point A to point B would be faster than light or uh, anything else can have any effect. It's uh, tall intent and purposes, instantaneous. Now, I will refer you back to Dune, the old antique uh, uh, sci-fi movie, where uh, a certain person is saying, hey, this is where we travel great distances without moving. You need to look that stuff up. Uh oh, what's this one? Okay, why are they putting bugs in our food, Drake? <laughs> <coughs> why? Because bugs got a chemical in it that uh, negates the human mind. <laughs> oh, so once again, Ooh, our, so you feel it's like for you, our, you, our, yeah, our demise. You're gonna, you're gonna burn demise. somewhere and eat a whole bunch of burgers, and, and you start feeling like you're losing your mind. Well. If you start going like a like a fly or something, you may you may understand why. Yeah, see, Pudwalker's Pudwalker's saying exactly the same thing, and he read about putting bugs in our food is a dark agenda. The bugs have a chemical that destroy the brain, just like you said. He's read it and he heard it. Yep. Okay. So here's here's another one. What's this one? Can we start 4D classes early? I'm anxious to actually learn something useful and not feed the deception. They could oh read your books, huh, Drake? Your books would be Yeah, boring. well, if you want to prepare for the transition, read my books. She's got them on her website. Now, 4D classes early? No. You got to be in 4D to get to 4D. Okay? It's real simple. How do you stop a panic attack? <laughs> Where did you see that one? I didn't even see that. Okay, let me see what this is. This one says, Machi said we went through a portal. Through a wormhole to the Lions Gate. It's on EBH. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to look that one up, EBH. So so she's saying that we went through a portal and then through a wormhole to the Lions Gate. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have to look the it Lions up. Gate. Okay. <coughs> All right. What's the good question here? Did I meet a good, miss a good question? Um, what is? Interesting and worth it. Drake's books are interesting and worth a read. I'm waiting on more. Or the next book. Are you working on another book, Drake? Um, no. I'm going to let what we got uh, suffice until such time as we are in 4D and we can take the classes ET and knows we need. Okay, here's one for you I missed earlier. Drake, is all the worldwide flooding still cleaning out the domes? Pakistan has been uh, devastated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's a problem with that, and that is they're they're hunting for the handle. And when I say they're hunting for the handle, uh, <clears throat> deep underground bases are tied into uh, tunnels and stuff. And it, you know, it, it's sort of like plumbing. If you don't know where the handle is, it's hard to flush the toilet. <laughs> oh. oh, you're bad. Okay, how do you stop a psychic attack? Well, first of all, you put the put that uh, pastel uh, armor on it. I talked about that's kind of a pinkish color. That won't that will stop all that crap. Number two, if it's already happening, you simply deny it. Now, by deny denial, I mean you actually reflect the evility back to its source. You don't know where the source is. You don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. You reflect it back anyway. Then they get to deal with taking out the garbage. <laughs> Let's see. 
<laughs> Somebody's Jan says, could you start over, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. good. You, you, you can watch the replay, Janice. <laughs> That's good. It's the replay is going to be uh, the recording that we're going to have at the end of all this stuff. Okay. How do you yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing if there's any questions that I miss. I usually is. Well, um, Okay, this is an interesting question. What direction do you lay down? Where should your head be pointing? Um, hmm. I would point my head to the west and my feet to the east. Um, that's the direction that I sleep at night, and I find it very resting. If you wish to... Um, I just moved my bedroom to the opposite. Well, the, the, my head it, would be at the east and my feet would be okay, at the east. Well, the thing is this. Our planet rotates. Energies are like a slip clutch. Thing gets going and then the other one takes off and catches up. Um, if your head's pointing to the west, nothing wrong with that. If it's pointing to the east, there's nothing wrong with that. Bear in mind that the sun, now think about this, Rises in the east, sets in the west. That means that we must be turning towards the east. Uh, therefore, this is why you, uh, someone who knows meditation very well will uh, face to the east. Because you are getting ahead of um, incidental and inconsequential energies and catching the ones that matter. And you can use this energy to your own benefit. You can actually build your your battery up. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I just had something in that moved. Here's oh. this one. Here's one that says, the Emerald Tablets say you should lay head north for one hour and south for an hour every day. <clears throat> yeah, well, the Emerald ta Tablets uh, are leaving out the other two. There's four cardinal directions. North, south, east, and west. Look, north and south, okay, that was covered, okay, now, east, that's where it comes up, that's the direction we're spinning, and west. So, if you use the four cardinal directions in the, in the ceremony uh, specified by, by uh, certain Egyptian um, priests, uh, you'll find that there is a north, south, east, and west, uh, with a finality. I remember man is, has got five, not just four, five. The fifth is this. The fifth is the direction you end up facing. So you do the north, you do the cardinal directions um, uh, ceremony, then you face east to get the best of the new energies coming to you and it does it's not a, it's not a question as to which which direction is best to sleep in is it's a question of uh if you're not sleeping in a faraday cage doesn't matter <laughs> hmm. Hmm. my bed face my bed face is east to mh um just now it didn't before though before it was um it was north and south so, anyway. Okay, let's see. I'm looking. I don't uh, somebody said, this is kind of what happens to me. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to put that up there because that answers a lot. I sleep north, south, and turn, and turn all night long. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right. you, what you should do is experiment putting your feet to the east and head to the west and find out what's going on. Lay my head on the pillow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. <know. laughs> I don't want to break my couch. I'm going to get. <laughs> okay, uh, we got some funny people in there. Uh, let's see. Whatever. Never eat. Oh, soggy wieners. Okay. Um, bugs are for chickens. Yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> uh, bed. Oh, it's shattering make us that they learn from said. Said guru, said guru um, about facing east. So I guess everybody has a different opinion, you know. 
Yeah, we're that's what I mean. A lot of that. <laughs> what you believe, what you tend to believe, is what you're gonna get. Remember, that's about to turn the light on, turn it up, and uh, hearing that still small voice that tells you how it really is. All that is so, me. Let me see. I ha I haven't seen any recent new questions, so I was thinking that maybe we could um, close the the show with a little more uh, shining your light. Directive. Sound like a good idea? Good. Okay, well. Everybody want to shine your light? I'm going to. Just shine yeah. your light on Satan and he, and he go blind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to. Uh, what's this now? We have a, David Reno Rodriguez had a guest on his show who was a former occultist. She was studying to be a mother of darkness. Oh my God. Wonderful. I hope she enjoys the shadow world. Mm, yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, okay. Let's do that. You're. Uh, I'm. You. You can lead this again. So, and then we'll end the show. Okay. Oh, that's scary. There we go. <laughs> okay. I'm very make... What is this? It's very simple. Make your light shine. Cause it to shine all the time that you can, daytime, nighttime, anytime. And you're going to receive a blessing that is so big and so abundant. It will fill up, fill things up to overflowing. And you can stand there with a bucket in one hand <coughs> and catch it as it comes spilling over. All you have to do is understand biblical principle in action, and you'll get there. That's basically how that works. And I'm going to say goodbye, everybody. All righty then. And thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed the uh, session for Shining Our Light. And I highly would encourage you to go out and shine your light so bright, maybe even fly around the planet in your vision and just shine that light everywhere. And... Uh, I think it'll get us out of this mess. And don't worry about everything that's going on around you. Everything I read and everything I know in my heart, things are going to get so much better once we get through some of these bumps. Don't pay any attention to the bumps. Just keep going and keep shining your light. Help your neighbor. Um, do what's right. Purify your thoughts, words, and deeds. And we will move into a much better world. And you helped. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, I love you all. Thank you for coming. And we will do more of this if you like it. And um, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Oh, by the way, this Friday, I will have uh, Jenny Lee, a psychic medium, on. So if you're interested in that, um, please tune in. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone. That connector, you can say bye too <laughs> if you're there. But anyway, okay, here we go. Had to unmute. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yes, good night.